So more about my favorite children's books, right? <laughs> um, that's my sensitive face, right? Hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to Johnny Masters Speaks, right? John Jonathan Daniel Masters, right? Um, I am talking about my favorite children's books, and um, and I'm still talking about. <laughs> this is a really long one, but I'm still talking about the um, uh, a roll of thunder here, my crime. Okay, and I'm talking about how there's a, a lynching that had happened in the book, and I'm pointing out that there was lynchings that were similar that had happened in Kentucky. In 1908, David Walker's entire family gets murdered because supposedly David Walker had swore at a white woman, right? I don't know if he called her stupid or a bitch or if he actually did any, any of that stuff, um, but because he had swore, because he had called her a name, I don't know if he called her a cunt or a bitch or your stupid face, you dummy head, or whatever it is that they had actually alleged, he could have actually done nothing right. It could just be total fucking bullshit. But because he allegedly had a quarrel or some sort of argument with the white woman, over 50 Western Kentucky Night Riders in Fulton County, Kentucky, set David Walker's house on fire using coal oil that they had carried with them. So they want to say, oh, well, they, we got there and then he pulled a gun on us and we had to fucking kill him. Well, why'd you bring the coal oil with you? That's bullshit. 50 Western Kentucky Night Riders at night. Nah, fucking bullshit. They meant to do um, violence and damage, and that's exactly what they did. They set David Walker's house on fire You're using that coal oil they had carried with them, and when the family came out, they shot them all dead, uh, except for the oldest boy who stayed in the house, and he burned inside. So at first, David Walker comes out, pleads with him, please don't do this, and uh, he gets shot. Then the, the mother comes out with the baby, thinking that might be... Uh, they might have, you know, some sort of uh, empathy or they might actually have a soul. No, they didn't give a shit. They shot her uh, while she was holding the baby and they shot through the baby and then she's falling down trying to cradle the baby and then she gets shot as she falls down. Um, then um, the other kids come out and then they get shot too. And, um, you know, so, so the, the wife is pleading for mercy. They didn't give a shit. The kids come out. They shot the kids. They all got gunned down. And uh, the eldest boy didn't come out, so he's probably inside the burning building. Or maybe he ran away. I don't know. I would like to think he ran away, but he probably just, he probably got killed too. So the whole fucking family, all David Walker's family in Fulton County got murdered because of an argument with a white woman. You want to talk about the privilege of a white woman? All you got to do is get into an argument with her and her racist fucking husband going to murder the whole fucking family. That's Fulton County. So even though the lynch mob claimed that John Henry Berry was flirting with the white woman, probably all he did was just maybe smiled at her. This is the, the book. John Henry Berry was the one that had got uh, burnt and then eventually dies. And he might have done something or maybe he was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. He was around a fucking racist piece of shit and they found any fucking reason to be a fucking prick to him. Later on in chapter 4, there's a tar and feathering of Mr. Tatum. So that's another time when white people took the law into their own hand and murdered an innocent black, or they tarred and feathered him so they didn't kill him, but they uh, used violence against an innocent black man. Okay, so here's some more quotes from the book. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred Taylor, written in 1974 or 76, about the 1930s, okay? So Mama's classroom was in the back, and I crept silently along the quiet hall, and I peeped cautiously in the open doorway. Mama pushed a strand of her long, crinkly hair back into the chig chigron, the chignon. The base of her slender neck was seated at her desk, watching Miss Crocker thrust a book before her. Just look at that, Mary, Miss Crocker said, thumping the book twice with her forefinger. A perfectly good book ruined. Look at that broken binding and those footmarks all over it. Right, so you actually had nine-year-old Cassie and Little Man who got pissed off about these dirty books, these dirty second-hand books that they got from the white schools. And then you looked at it and you saw that it used to be good, excellent condition, good, 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 poor, shitty condition. Then, um, you know, white kids had it. And then at the very end, it's for the, the Negroes. And, um, and so they got pissed off and they, like, you know, threw it down and then Little Man's jumping all over it. So this is the teacher, Miss Crocker, going to their mother, who's also working at the school, and talking about, hey, you know, I had to beat the shit out of your kids because they were, you know, disobedient. So Mama did not speak as she studied the book, and here's the one that Cassie wouldn't take. 
Miss Crocker said, placing the second book on Mama's desk with an outraged slam. At least she didn't have a tantrum and stomp all over hers. I tell you, Mary, I just don't know what got into these children today. I always knew Cassie was rather high strung, but little man, he's always such a perfect little gentleman. Mama glanced at the book I had rejected and opened the front cover so that the offensive pages of both books faced her. You say Cassie said it was because of this front page that she and little man didn't want the books? Mama asked quietly. Yes, ain't that something, Miss Crocker said, forgetting her teacher training school diction and in her indignation. The very idea that's on all the books. Why they got uh, so upset about it, I'll never understand. Did you punish them? asked Mama, glancing up at Miss Crocker. Why, well, I certainly did. Whip them both. Good with my hickory stick. Wouldn't you have? I whipped them. Just like a good white massa, right? I whipped them. Wouldn't you have? When Mama did not reply, she added defensively, Well, I had a perfect right to. Well, of course you did, Daisy, Mama said, turning back to the books again. They disobeyed you. But her tone was so quiet and noncommittal that I knew Miss Crocker was not satisfied with her reaction. Well, I thought you would have wanted to know, Mary, in case you wanted to give them a piece of your mind, too. I whipped them. Whoosh, whoosh. And I wanted you to whip them, too, right? Come on. Let's, let's do like the whites and whip our fucking kids. Ha, ha, ha. All right, let's be, let's love ourselves some white Jesus and do as the white people do and whip them, beat the shit out of our kids. Yeehaw! Fucking psychos. And that's weird. You can, if you hurt a kitten, you'll go to fucking jail, but you can beat the fuck out of a kitten. Who gives a shit, right? That's such bullshit. They're the most innocent and vulnerable people out here. There's no such thing as children's rights, and it's bullshit. It's immoral, and it's bullshit. It's actually the very opposite of what Jean Jacques Rousseau would say, how you're supposed to raise your kids. The exact opposite. But who the fuck knows what Jean Jacques Rousseau wants in America? Nobody. So, carrying on. Okay. So, Mama smiled up at Miss Crocker and said absently, Of course, Daisy, thank you. Right? Thank you very much for beating the shit out of my kids over some dumb shit, right? And the scene, actually, where she's like, she's just a fucking terror, a fucking tyrant. You know, in the class, she's a fucking tyrant. Just staring at people. You better do as I say. Here's your books. You better be grateful for it. And, you know, they, they weren't grateful.